In looking at USS Independence, you see a remarkably intact wreck. A ship that survived the Operation Crossroads testing, only to be towed off for intensive study. And, when that study concluded, being expended as a target. Independence is, for the most part, in one piece. And, aside from a lot of sea sponges, more or less the same condition as when she sank. At least, that was the case when her wreck was surveyed. Let's look at that wreck in this video, beginning with the usual brief overview of her sinking. To start, as I said earlier, Independence was chosen for Operation Crossroads. However, unlike Saratoga or Arkansas, she survived that test. Both Abel and Baker failed to sink her, or even cause enough damage to make her a write-off. This is not to say, however, that the ship came out in one piece. Pictures of Independence, like this one, show how bad the damage was. Her topside was ravaged, with the funnels and island crumpled in. The stern of the flight deck was also totaled, with the deck forward of that, as seen here, pretty badly buckled. The side of the hull was also crumpled in, but not to the extent of, for example, Saratoga. In the end, the damage was severe, but not enough to sink her. So, Independence would be towed off to Pearl Harbor after decommissioning on August 28th, 1946. And from there, she was sent on to San Francisco for further testing. The impacts of lingering radiation, especially on the warships, required investigation. Independence was a useful test, as these things go. Still, with the ship too heavily damaged and irradiated to bother returning to service, Independence's days were numbered. The Navy had no need for her, and decided to scuttle the ship on January 29, 1951. Her wreck was largely forgotten at that point, until the early 21st century. The wreck was initially discovered in 2009, and then surveyed by sonar in 2015, which confirmed that the wreck is remarkably intact. The carrier rests at a depth of 790 meters, or 2,600 feet, off the coast of California. That's fairly shallow, as these things go, which likely explains how overgrown the wreck is. In spite of that, as we'll see, most of the ship is still recognizable. First, though, we have the 2015 survey. That produced images like this, which show a very intact hulk. Even the flight deck is still there, to some extent, in spite of the time underwater. Considering what the ship was put through, it's impressive how much is left. The shape of the hull is clear, and you can even make out the remnants of the elevators. With that said, it would only be in 2016 that pictures were taken of the wreck. That was a further visit by a team under James Delgado. It surveyed the wreck in some detail, much like the visits to the Midway wrecks last year complete with streaming footage of the dive. The wreck they found is largely recognizable beneath all these sponges. There are even a couple looks in the hangar. Although, one thing to note before I move to the pictures of the wreck. There was a bit of controversy with Independence. The ship was loaded with barrels of nuclear waste before she was scuttled. This fact was debated a fair bit before her wreck was found, but the sonar scanning located those in the hangar with several rusted out. I haven't found any pictures of those barrels, drain the ocean models aside. They are there, however, and are falling apart. With how long those have been down there, and how deep the wreck is, there's little risk at this point. But it does go to show how little care was put into disposing of things at the time. Right, with that out of the way, let's look at the wreck itself. For this video, I'll begin with the weaponry and other smaller features before moving to the hull. Starting with the 40mm Bofors, which were left aboard during and after crossroads. In common with the other test ships, a light weapon load was carried during the test. This was intended to figure out how the bombs impacted every aspect of the ships. In the modern day, these are fairly well preserved. While covered in sponges like the rest of the ship, it's otherwise recognizable. There's not much silt coverage, and the rusting isn't as bad as you'd expect. As for the rest of the image, you can see the deck in the background, along with an open doorway. 
The next picture, for its part, seems to be the same mount from a different angle. Here you can see more of the mounting itself, with the railing still intact. Although it does look like the splinter shield folded over the mount. I'll put an arrow to that. Also, much of the finer detail is covered by either silt or the array of sponges. You could say the same for the deck, which has a fine covering of mud all over it. Can't see how much, if any, of the actual wood is still left. Moving on, though, we come to the only other weapon aboard the ship. Or, at the least, the only other one photographed. This appears to be the remnants of a 20mm cannon, judging from the gun shield. With the sponge covering most of it, it's hard to make out more than that. Although, on the topic of the sponges, you also have one growing inside the ship. That is, I think, another entrance. Just one halfway buried in mud. As for the rest of this area, it's buried in the marine life, so there's not much to make out, other than more twisted metal. Which leaves us with two pictures of one piece of equipment to round this section off. And this piece probably seems a bit out of place on a light carrier. With good reason, because it wasn't originally there. This is a Christmas tree, as it was nicknamed. These were mounting points for pressure instruments fitted to ships for the crossroads test. After the testing concluded, it was just left aboard Independence, presumably because the Navy saw no need to remove it when they were going to get rid of the ship anyway. Today, it's one of the more recognizable parts of the wreck, both because it's a distinctive piece of equipment and because it's intact, not to mention it isn't covered in sponges. I believe the area next to it, for its part, is the base of the aircraft crane. The next picture shows it in much better detail. There's an intact ladder leading inside it, and a bar that might be part of the crane itself. If this is the crane, it would be here on the wreck, right by the island, which is probably the structure to the side. With that done, we can move on to the hull. First, we have the front of the flight deck. It would appear the wood is completely rotted away here, and the metal is joining it. The deck is falling apart with rust, most likely where it was damaged, either during crossroads or the gunnery trials. That damage would have weakened the metal and made it more susceptible to rusting. There's also a piece missing entirely at the very front. It looks like a clean break, so most likely a piece that broke at its joint. This is also the better of the two pictures of the flight deck. The second one here is not as pretty. You have the rusting deck, now in a pair of straight lines. However, the more notable thing is the blown out deck to the side. While it's mostly out of frame, you can see how violent the damage is here. I think this is probably from the sinking, not from crossroads. Now the next picture moves further back and to the side. I'm not sure exactly where this is on the ship, but we have another entrance here. As is typical on these wrecks, it's open to the ocean. The ROV didn't get close enough to see what's inside, other than some mud. More impressive, I think, is how intact the walkway is next to it. Even the stairs and railing. Not much else to note here, other than the deck and the sponges. So, let's look at the next picture. Here we have an empty gun tub. While Independence carried some weapons to the crossroads test, most of her loadout was removed. This is one such case. Whatever was mounted here, probably a 40mm Bofors mount, was pulled off, leaving the empty tub hanging off the side of the ship. Unfortunately, with how dark the image is, there's not much else to make out. The ship in the background is there, but you can't see much. The next picture, on the other hand, is better lit. This is below the starboard side of the flight deck. There's another ladder here, along with some sort of hanging metal. I think the gap, seen here, is damage. That damage aside, though, there's not much to speak of, other than colorful marine life. The sponge coverage in the next picture isn't quite as extensive, at least, revealing more of the hull. Here we have another gun tub, along with the walkway next to it. This is bent up and inwards, either from damage or from impacting the seabed. Towards the tub, it looks like it might even be touching the side of the ship. There's also more entrances into the ship beneath the silt-covered deck, which is a nice point to move to the next picture. 
another entrance, this time up close and personal. You still can't see much of the inside of the ship, other than what might be some debris. But, on the other hand, this close-in shot shows the metal better. It's in real color, without the blue tints of the lights and deep ocean. Both the rust and silt are more apparent here, along with what might be remnants of paint. I like these close-in looks for that reason. There's one more later on, but first let's look at the bow. Here, the cruiser lineage of the ship is very apparent. Independence began her life as a Cleveland-class cruiser, and you can see that in the bow. It's very slim and sharp. However, this picture is so close in that we can't see much past the bow. The seabed is visible, as is the anchor chain. There is also some debris on the deck that is easier to see in the next picture. That said, the second image still only really shows the fronts of the bow in any real detail. It is better than the stern, which only has this one picture that I've found. An extreme close-up shot looking at her name. While the ship is very heavily rusted here, and more sponges are covering it, you can still make out the name, or at least most of it. It's faded and hard to read, but the fact it survived all these years is still impressive. Not that there was any doubt this was independence, but still. In any event, now that we've covered the weaponry and hull, that just leaves the aircraft. A Grumman F6F Hellcat sitting in the ruined hangar. Actually, this aircraft was not supposed to be here. Two aircraft were left aboard for the crossroad test and studied afterward. Both were supposed to be disposed of, and it was recorded that they were. However, that didn't happen to the Hellcat here. Regardless, this plane is in pretty good shape, all things considered. The engine is falling away, but the shape of the Hellcat remains. The cockpit is still there, and the canopy is still pulled back. The wings are still fairly intact, and you can even see the machine guns here. The tail is pretty much gone, though, and the plane, along with the hangar, is buried in decades of mud. And, in the background, you can see the hangar wall. With that, we come to the end of the video. I saved one final shot of the ship herself to round things off. The ROV illuminating what I believe to be the island. This is such a striking image, it felt like the perfect thing to end on. Independence may not be a particularly famous ship or wreck, but I still think she's worth looking at. Even if glass sponges seem to have colonized the entire wreck. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.